Our subject on today comes to you by way of a question. And the question is this. Do you believe in what you've got? Do you believe in what you've got? In other words, do you believe in what God has given you to work with? And so I want you to open your Bibles with me, if you will, to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. And I believe that we're going to begin reading in verse 26. Actually, 46. Verse 46 is where we'll begin. But I want to set up uh, uh, this story before we begin to read because I'm going to be sharing with you and we're going to be reading about David today. We know that at, this was before David became king. And uh, I want you to understand that David's three brothers had gone off to war to fight for Saul. And of course, David stayed back to take care of the sheep because that's who he was. He was a shepherd boy. And so while his brothers are off at war, David's father sends David to the fields or to the pastures where they were warring. And he tells him, he says, David, I want you to take your brother some food. And so David goes out to take his brother some food. And when he gets there, he hears all this talk about this giant called Goliath. And, and here's the thing that I think that it's important for you to understand is that Goliath was bad. I mean, this, this giant, if you'll think about it, he's 10 feet tall. When we were in our bedroom this morning, Pastor said, well, uh, or last night, Pastor said, well, if you can imagine that he was a foot taller beneath than our ceiling. So Goliath was a tall giant, and, and here's the deal. Every day when they would go out to fight, the Philistines would send Goliath out. And Goliath would come all dressed in his armor, and, and the men of, that Saul had doing battle would turn around and they would run because they were so, so fearful. So this is the way that the battle was going. And so when David got there, he heard all of this talk, all of this talk about the war that was going on and how everybody, all the soldiers were afraid of Goliath. And so David wanted to know who this giant was. Because here's the thing, David believed in what God had given him to work with. And David believed that given a chance, let me at Goliath, I'll take care of him. And so uh, once David found out that there was a reward for winning the battle, how I many of you know whenever you're in a battle and you're trusting God, when you come through, there's a reward. You do need to understand that in case you're in a battle right now, in a war in your life, if you'll just hold on and trust God, when you come through this thing, God's got a reward for you. Somebody say, thank God. So here's, once David found out that there was a reward, David wants to go and get in the fight, and, and, and that's exactly what he does. And so we're going to pick up in verse 46. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. What chapter did we say? Chapter 17 and verse 46 and so David, remember, he's out there just talking with the soldiers, and David was really a trash talker. You, you guys know what that is. You understand when we talk about people talking trash, that's who David was. He was a trash talker. He, David talked big. And so in verse 46, David says, This day will the Lord deliver thee, talking about Goliath, into my hand, and I shall smite thee and take thine head from thee. He goes out there, see Goliath, everybody else had been running. David goes out there and talk trash. Have you ever done that? Y'all ever done that? You ever talk trash to somebody? You know, you really might be a little scared, but you know, you're a trash talker. Especially if you're from Texas. We, some, we, 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 we talk big. Texas is a big state. We talk big. So David goes out there and he let him know. He says, this day will the Lord deliver you into mine hand. He says, I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses a, uh, of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. 
And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. So we understand that David believed in what he had to work with. And so I want to begin our lesson today by posing this very important question that I want you to carefully consider. As a matter of fact, you don't have to answer it right now. In fact, I'd prefer that you wait until the end of the service and then answer this question that I'm going to ask you. And the question is this. Do you believe in what God has given you? Do you believe in what God has given you to work with? Do you have faith in what you've got? Or, here's the other part of that question, are you the type of person who chooses to focus more on what you do not have than what you do have? Are you the type of person who focuses on, you know, well, I don't have this, and I don't have that, and I don't have enough of this or that. See, a lot of people do not recognize what they've got. Tell your neighbor, say, she ain't talking about me. She ain't talking about me. Mm -hmm. See, somebody just lied. <laughs> Some people do not recognize what God has given to them. And of course... When you can't see or you don't recognize what God has given to you, it stands to reason that you're going to focus on what you don't have. When you don't recognize and you can't see what God has given you, what he's given you to work with, it stands to reason you're going to focus on what you don't have, what, uh, not enough, instead of realizing that you've got what it takes in order to do what God has called you to do. See, here's what I want you to understand today. And this is our first point for those that are taking notes. That when God called you to be who he called you to be, and when God called you to do what he called you to do, God gave you everything that you need in order to do you and to be you in the earth. I'm going to repeat that. When God called you to be who he called you to be, sister, and God called you to do what he called you to do, my brother, God gave you everything that you need in order to be you and to do you in the earth. God gave you everything that you need in order to fulfill your place in earth. You need to know that if you were dropped off, this is the way God brought this to me this morning. He said, Anitha, if somebody picked you up and took you into a state and dropped you off there, a state that you'd never been in before, you've got everything you need to make it. I said, all right. Okay. In fact, if somebody took you and placed you in a foreign country, a country you've never been to before, do you think you've got what it takes to make it? Got everything you need to make it because you've got you. And remember, God placed in you everything that you need to be you and to do you in the earth. Lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Say, when God made me, and called me. He gave me everything I need to be me and do me in the earth. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? However, what we do is that we have a tendency to look at ourselves and say, poor me. I don't have, I can't do, 
And we formulate this list or this picture in our head that matches what we think about ourselves and what we say and we feel which limits our potential and our ability for success. See, we focus on what Sister Angel got, what Brother Angel got, what they have been able to accomplish and what they've been able to do, but poor me. Look at me. I don't have enough of this. I don't have enough of that. And we downplay, we criticize, and we negate what we do have. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. And that's very dangerous. It's very dangerous to downplay, to negate, and to criticize what you've got. Because the reality is, is that you have in you survival instinct. Why? Because when God made man, he breathed into him the breath of life. God made you after his image. He made you spirit man. You walking around with God inside of you. And you're downplaying what you've got. I don't have this. I don't have that. And most of the time we're talking about shoes, clothes, hairdos, fingernails. Listen, you can get some of that if you realize what you've got and what you're working with. Oh, tell your neighbor, say, I'm working with something. Oh, yeah. You've got survival instinct on the inside of you. How many of you know you, you, you're a survivor? You've got success instinct on the inside of you. I don't understand it, but every time the devil tell me I'm going down, something rises up on the inside of me and says, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to make it. I don't understand it. It just happens that way. Happens that way, Brother Tony. Every time something tells me, you're going down. You know it ain't going to happen for you. My, my, my success instinct starts flourishing. It starts wiggling around. I feel something moving deep down in my belly that says the devil is a liar. Woo. Yeah. See, that's the success instinct that God put in me, breathed into me. And so on today, I want to remind you of a little shepherd boy named David who dared to believe in what he had. You've got to dare to believe in what you have. You've got to dare to believe that there is something more inside of you, that there is something that you just, even if you can't put your finger on it, even if you're not in touch with God in you yet, you've got to know there's something in you because, see, there's a light that lighteth every man. God made sure that you would be able to connect with him so much so till he says, you know what, if my people don't praise me, I'll cause the rocks to cry out. In other words, in everything that God made, he placed, placed inside of that thing, the ability to cry out to him. So he says, folk, if y'all don't want to praise me, that's all right. I'll get the rocks to cry out. Well, I was talking to someone just recently because you know how new agers do. They want to make everything God. This water glass could be God. <laughs> this podium, as long as it's a higher power. See, here's the thing that, that, that you know, we, we understand that it has been proven, you know, scientifically, that, you know, some certain rocks produce certain energy. We, we, we know those things, but we ain't worshiping that. We ain't worshiping no rocks. We worship the true and living God. So we're going to talk about this little shepherd boy, David. Believed. And what God had given him. And if you know the story, the second point that I'm going to make, then you know that what he had didn't look like much. Lift up your hands and say, what I got, what I got. don't look like much. <laughs> See, sometimes what we have don't look like much. You understand that, right? I mean, sometimes your, your little building that you might have. I remember when we first started the church, that little building didn't look like much. 
You know, sometimes your clothes don't look like much. Sometimes the little job you have don't look like much. You know, maybe you're working somewhere you don't even want to be, and you don't even want nobody to see you go in there. <laughs> it's like, Lord, please don't let them see me go in here. You're trying to slip through the back door of the building. Because sometimes what we have don't look like much at all. It don't look like much to anybody else, and it doesn't look like much to us. How many of you know who Bishop T.D. Jakes is? I don't think there's probably one person in here who haven't heard of Bishop Jakes. Bishop Jakes, when he went to Oklahoma to Azusa one year, what he had didn't look like much. And as a matter of fact, Bishop, half Bishop tell it, he says he went in there with his little, you know, pressed and iron suit. <laughs> Maybe you still pressing and iron in your suits. You know, you can't send them to the cleaners. Got a big iron mark on it. <laughs> Actually, I put on this skirt today, and I sent it to the cleaners, and it has an iron mark on it. It does. I'm going to take it back to them. And so, it's, but as, as faith would have it, and destiny would have it, Bishop went in there to Azusa. Carlton Pearson was over it at the time. Didn't have much. Went in there. You know, didn't have much money in his pocket, but one of the main speakers that was supposed to speak that day couldn't make it. And so uh, Carlton Pearson was trying to find somebody to speak. You know, who can I get to fill this place? You know, he's some big shoes to fill. And, and one of the preachers spoke up. Nobody had ever heard of T.D. Jakes. And he said, well, you know what, uh, uh, Bishop uh, Pearson, there's a man here and you know, he was scared to tell him about the Bishop Jakes because, you know, Bishop came in there, run over shoes and stuff. He said, but I'll tell you, he said, this man can preach, and if you just give him a chance, he may not look like much, but he'll bring the word. Come on, lift up your hands and say, what I have may not look like much. Bishop went in there, preached the uncompromised word of God, and the rest is history. Hallelujah. What you have may not look like much, but you've got to understand if you believe in what you've got, God can do something with it. See, what David had didn't look like much. As a matter of fact, I'm sure that David's brothers were probably, number one, embarrassed by him because he was a shepherd boy, supposed to have been keeping the sheep, Daddy sent him with the lunch to take it to his brothers. Here come David. And you know, David was a handsome young man, but he was young. You know, you know, young, cocky. Come there. Didn't have nothing but a little shepherd's bag in his hand. Some food in the other hand. Talking smack. So his brothers were embarrassed by him. They were afraid of him. And I'm sure that they were probably angry with him. The day that David's father sent him to bring the lunch and then come on back home because the little shepherd boy David, he gets there to the, to the war zone and here's David, he's walking around instead of going back home, he's talking to like a big shot. How many of you know what a big shot is? Who don't know what a big shot is? Raise your hand. So everybody know what a big shot is. Look, by now everybody's ashamed to hold their hand even if they don't know. In Texas, people that were big, you know, thought they were a big deal. You know, maybe they had a nice little car and stuff and dressed nice. We say, oh, they're trying to act like a big shot. They're not even regular no more. Well, David was walking around the war zone acting like a big shot, talking smack to the soldiers. As a matter of fact, in chapter 17, let's look at chapter 17 and verse 26. I'll give you a minute to get there. Y'all there? Everybody there? Well, can I get a little sip of water? See, I say that sometimes, you know, so I can get a little sip of water. Y'all supposed to roll with me. So David, you know, he's walking around talking smack. And in verse 26, the Bible says, And David spake to the men that stood by him. This is little shepherd boy David. Saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine? and taketh away the reproach from Israel. In other words, what's my reward going to be? What am I going to get paid? And then he goes on to say, 
For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. So they tell David what's going to happen. David, if you're able to kill Goliath, then you're going to get the king's wife, and you know there are a few other things that you're going to get. And then the Bible goes on to say in verse 28, And Eliab, David's eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, now this is big brother, What cameth thou down here? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? In other words, boy, you better get back home and take care of the sheep. You're not supposed to be out here running your mouth, talking all this smack to these soldiers. What are you doing here? You know how you do your little brother or your little sister. Why you know who's watching the sheep? He says, and he goes on to tell David, he says, I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart. And thou art come down here that you can see the battle. Then in verse 29, and David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? So what you have to do in your life is you have to consider what's happening in my life right now. Is there a cause that I need to rise up to? What is it? See, you don't back down when the devil is coming against you. You've got to believe in what you've got. You've got to believe in what God has given you. I'm not going to run because the devil is coming against me. And that's what was happening, understand, out in the field where they were doing battle, Sister Nikki. They were coming out and they were facing Goliath or seeing him every day, but they weren't facing him. They'd take out and start running. Every time they saw this big 10-foot giant, they started running. So David was like, hey, why are you getting mad at me for, brother? Well, what were you getting mad at me for? Isn't there a cause? I believe in what I'm working with. I believe in myself. I believe in what God has invested in me. David believed in what he had. He truly believed in what God had given him and placed on the inside of him. Everything that he needed to do himself in the earth. How many of you trying to do you? If you ain't trying to do somebody else, but if you're trying to do you, you've got the goods to do you. See, the problem is, is that oftentimes we try and do somebody else. Instead of doing me, I'm going to do Pastor A. Instead of doing me, I'm going to do this person over here. Because I like the way they look. I like the way they flow. No, 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 no. Just do you. Tell the person next to you, say, just do you and you'll be all right. Yeah. Everything that you need to do you in the earth. You've got it on the inside of you. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 7. Keep your hand in, in, in 1 Samuel, but go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. I want to show you something that really blessed me. Hallelujah. Isn't the word good? You say, Pastor, you sure I've got the goods? You've got the goods to do you. And if you're trying to do me, you're trying to do that person behind you on the side of you, you ain't got the goods. And that's why we get so weary sometimes in doing well. That's why we get so tired. Because we're trying to do somebody else instead of doing us. And so in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7, the Bible says, but we have, are you there? It says, but we have this What's that word? Treasure. Where? In earthen vessels. Say, I am that earthen vessel. So the Bible says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Everything you need is inside of you. God's already given it to you to be you. And he 
called you, when he called you, he said, before I send you forth, I'm going to put my treasure in you. That treasure is God in you. 